Okay, we're gonna get into a full service on this, plus some repairs. If uh, you guys seen the video before this, I had picked it up, uh, somebody swung up on the side of the road. I picked it up and I did a quick check. There's a few things wrong with it. One, which is a uh, shear pin broken right here. I'm gonna spray some penetrating oil on that. I'm also gonna take the tires off and get some uh, NECs on the, uh, the axles. Anyway, so I'm gonna do a full service on this, but to start with, I have to Start it, put it outside, let it run to get the oil hot because I want, I don't like draining oil when it's cold or you don't get everything, everything settles to the bottom of the uh, crank. And if you just drain the oil and put fresh oil in, as soon as you start it up, all that dirt that was on the bottom of the crank goes in your fresh oil. So you start it, you heat it up, you get everything turning, get all the particles that are in the bottom of the crank, mix them with the oil, then you drain it. So before I start it, I'm just going to get some penetrating oil on uh, two areas. One is the axle both tires and the broken shear pin. I'm find where the shear pin is. It should line up with this one. Okay, <laughs> looks like my uh, liquid wrench I got here, my penetrating oil is uh, running out of air. Okay, I got ATF and acetone, so if I can't get enough of this, I'll just mix some penetrating oil up. I don't recommend this. It does goes against everything that WIMIS, in Canada anyway, stands for. Anyway, so a bit of ATF, automatic transmission fluid. And you're just gonna mix enough to get on there and on the uh, axles. Okay. That sink, and I'm also going to uh, put some on the other side, and then I'm going to let it sit. Okay, I got to stuff my hand in there and turn that to get some uh, that newly mixed penetrating fluid on the other side. So I'm going to pull the key, which is here, and the spark plug, just to be in the safe side, it doesn't start, and then we'll just. Turn the impeller around here until I, the other side comes up. And I'll get some penetrating fluid in that side. I'm just judging from where this shear pin is to bring this one up. And I'll grab the light for a second. Yeah, there it is. So I'll get some dumped in there. Okay, so we're gonna let that sit. And I'm gonna go do the axles now. And we'll get some on the other side. Okay, so we got the penetrating oil in. Now we're gonna let that sit for, until I'm done. Anyway, take the block out. Put it back over here, put the key back in, hook the spark plug back up. And I already did check this oil when I went through it, but to be on the safe side, I didn't do anything, but before you start anything, this thing is loose. I'm gonna have to get some Loctite on it. Check the oil, oil's full and there's enough gas in there. So I'm just gonna start this and I'm gonna put it outside, let it run for about, probably about 10, 15 minutes just to get it warmed up to get ready for the, uh, the oil change. Gas starts pouring on the tire, you know you're primed. This is, maybe you shouldn't prime it that much. Okay, moving off. Okay, careful, because this oil is going to be extremely hot. Now normally, on a uh, comes the engine, I got a pair of vice grips. And I'm gonna grab a rag, because like I say, this is gonna be hot. Just came <laughs> from outside running 15 minutes. A lot of times you gotta hold this pipe. Oh, actually I don't, not in this one. Okay, if I go this way, it shouldn't hit the side. This is, that's an oil? Yep. Okay. Okay, it's tight. Next thing I'm gonna do, okay, put the oil cap back on tight. I'm gonna put a sticker on this that says no oil because it's gonna be a while before I feel the oil because I gotta do all the other service first. So. so I don't forget, right here, no oil, so I know. So right now I'm gonna shut the gas off and I checked there is too much gas it's about here so I gotta flip this up on end. So I'm gonna drain the gas out of it. Plus it's old gas anyway. But before I do that, I'm gonna shut the fuel off. This probably has never been turned before. Okay, fuel's off. Make sure it's not leaking. Grab the flashlight. Like I said, this probably has never been turned on or off before. No, we're good. So right now I'm gonna drain the fuel and put it in a container. Like I say, the fuel's way up to here. So if I flip this up, that's gonna start leaking there everywhere. I got a container that says old gas. I'm gonna suck it out of here, put it in here. I can reuse this or Put fresh stuff in when I fill it back up. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. The M3 
empty? Yep. Okay. That's how much gas was in it. Okay, so what I like doing, I usually take my carpet I have over here and I flip it on the carpet. What that does, it stops it from sliding, it stops from damaging your floor, and it stops it from chipping all the paint in front of your snowblower. So right now there's no oil, there's no gas. Gas is shut off. Flip it up on end. Take the bottom plate out. Okay, so we got to clean all that, all that up, lube that, and I've got a problem right here. It's right here, you can tell that this hole here is almost, either the hole or the uh, bolts all messed up. But there's another hole right here, so. Yeah, what I thought was wrong with it, it's actually part of the design because it comes up right there, and then it shoots over from a steep angle oh, to a shallow angle, so that's, that's normal. Okay. But you have to put some oil in it. Yeah, I'm going to lube all this up. We're not running across any major issue. These are both worn out. But it's because whoever put this together, put it together with screws that are, or bolts that are too small for these tires. I'll take one out and I'll show you. Yeah, these are just... <laughs> What these are are shear pins. Remember I said I gotta go buy shear pins because I'm broken one, one's broken front? <laughs> I got two, one there and one there. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's because they used, uh, I'm gonna get this properly done up after. Because they used, uh, it elongated it just a bit, but not much. Okay, so that's no, no issue. I'm gonna bore you with cleaning this, very clean, Varsol, whatever you have to clean it but I gotta have it perfectly clean to give it to the guy so he can scan it and get me the color so I can get all this rust touched up. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is take these off so the axles don't seize on the uh, rims and then it creates a nightmare. But before I do that, I'm gonna get my uh, PL100 and lube this bushing. And I'm gonna get a rag and put on, I'll put a rag in here so I don't get any grease or oil. I will clean it, <clears throat> but for now, I just don't wanna get grease and oil on it. During the service, I'm mean, still gonna fall on it. I will clean it. The least amount that I get on it, the better. Okay, so I may as well do the other side while I'm here. I'm just... I'm gonna spray everything in here. Okay, so. We'll get everything inside here all lubed up. I'm also going to use grease in here and I'm going to put stone bill grease on the gears here, but I'm gonna get everything lubed that I want lubed first. And I got my gloves back on. This was the reason why I did all the uh, rust repair prior to service, because once you spray the lube, it goes everywhere and it would have been just that much harder. Okay, so I'm just gonna spray everything possible, even under here, stuff like here, back, anything I can see around the carburetor, I'm gonna just spray, you can watch. I may fast forward it, I'm not sure. You can see the difference of quality of the uh, Aaron's and uh, a lot of the other uh, cheaper snowblowers. This one has good bushings, bearings everywhere, and a lot of the uh, cheaper models may have the same metal, same case, look the same, but they, they'll have plastic bushings, no bearings in it whatsoever. Everything's plastic and it wears out twice as, uh, twice as fast. Well, I have this upside down. I'm just gonna get inside here where the chute goes. Okay, well, I'm here. I was going to grab my grease gun, but I have a spare. So I'm just going to use the, uh, the low temp. It's the same stuff I use on snowmobiles, just on the uh, gear. I'll get it on there and I'll wipe off the excess. And you also want grease on this shaft where this slides back and forth. 
So I'll get some on that shaft. I'll slide that over. Now I'm just gonna clean the oil and grease that I have on this for the drive, and I'm gonna call it a day in here and I'll put the cover back on. So we gotta clean the, this wheel up, if not, and the rubber on here. If not, when you try to move forward or reverse, it won't work. Gear on the other side. Okay, we're good. I'm just gonna put the cover back on. And I already put any seize on all these bolts, so in the future they don't seize. Any seize on a shaft is important. Okay, so as you put the tire and the rim on, and you get the anti seize there. As you go in, you spin it to keep the anti seize. You're coating also the inside of this, and you're not just pushing it all to one end. When you get to the end, there's two holes, one inner one, one outer one. You take your pin, and I'm gonna get a bit of anti-seize on the pin. So it also doesn't seize in there. And you put it on the inner hole, and basically it's locked down, no bolts, no nothing. And I mentioned earlier, if you ever want to move it around the shop, make it easier, just take it out, you put it in this hole, you lock it in, and then it's really easy to move. But we're getting this ready, because it is winter, it is snow outside. We're getting this ready to actually snow blow. So you want it, both axles locked. I'll put a link to everything I use in the description. So we'll go do the other side. Okay, we're gonna lower that down, get my flashlight off of there, and we'll service everything else. Next, I'm going to go around and just check, make sure everything's tight on it. I noticed when I move the handle, there's some play here, so you get in here. Okay, these are a little loose. A little loose, just give everything a snug. Okay, that's tight. That's tight. That one's tight. Tight. Loose. Okay, I'm gonna need another 916s. Normally a machine that's been serviced all the time, stuff like this not required, but this, I have no idea about this one. Okay, so that's tight. And you go ahead and you do everything else. These bolts, those bolts, just check overall. Now we're gonna to move to the uh, front auger. I'll lift it up on a couple of blocks. Now in the other video when I was doing everything else, I took both shear pins out because it was easier to paint back there. I could just move those easier and get the paintbrush in there to touch it up. One shear pin was broken, I replaced, oh, I haven't replaced it yet, but I took it out. So. What I'm going to do now, this particular one has uh, Zerk fittings. I'm going to put some grease in there, that way they don't seize. And you don't have to worry about them seizing and breaking your main gear. It helps to keep those uh, greased up. And sometimes it even helps to take the shear pin out, grease it up, and put it back in with some anti-seize. That way when you do break a shear pin, it's easy to fix. Before we go any further, I'm going to lube the bushings on the either side. I don't know if you can see that. 
Okay, that was a good. So I just get more grease in here and we should be good. Let's see if we can get this inside here. Let me say snowmobile grease. And I need the grease to go from one end to the other to stop it from seizing. And if it does seize, it will break this gear if it ever happens to hit something. Oh, I'm holding it tight. It's still coming out. It's, it's probably it's never been greased before. And I'm having trouble getting grease through the shaft. Okay, so we finally got some snow. I can finish this off. Uh, I had a friend over the other day and uh, when I was having trouble on the inside getting the grease to come out, uh, he was over. I didn't have the camera going and I took the shear pin back out and I had him hold two pieces of rubber with a pair of pliers on either side and I was pumping the grease in. Finally, I got the grease to come out both ends. Yeah, the reason why you want to make sure you got grease coming out of both ends when you're pumping it with uh, the grease gun is because when you hit something here, you want the shear to pin, the shear pin to break instead of the gears right here. Because if this is rusted and seized up, you will break the gears, not the shear pin, because it'd be rusted solid and it'd be one big solid piece. I always make sure the grease goes both ways and it's spinning freely. Now we can get the oil in this. I gotta change the spark plug. So I'm gonna start with, uh... okay, I'll leave that on for now. I'm gonna start by putting oil in it. I still have my sign here saying no oil. So before we go any further, I'm going to get some oil. And I'm going to use <clears throat> 5W30 full synthetic. I always pour it in a small container like this from a bigger one like this, because that way I can measure how much I put in. I'm going to start by trying 20 ounces, which is uh, roughly about 600 milliliters. What I'm doing now is just go and make sure there's... They have drains on the side of this engine that are not used, because the drains in the back. I don't want to make sure they're tight so they don't vibrate up. They do, the engine will blow. Okay, let's get some gas in it. I'll check the oil one more time after it settles out of this tube. So I'm going to put in non-ethanol with seafoam already mixed in it, which is a Shell 91. And I'll turn the fuel on as I turn this off when I was servicing it. And we're going to change the plug. You can tell it was running rich. It was probably the carburetor was a little dirty. Anyway, we're going to check the gap on this and put it in. Check the manual. It should be uh, between 2831, somewhere around there, thousands. Oh. And screw it in until it seats. I don't know what the torque is, I have to check that. Okay, so we check the oil one more time. Okay, the oil is full. So I can't take my sign that says no oil off. I looked for I looked for a knob for this. I couldn't find one, so I'm just gonna use. Uh, I have two stainless steel nuts, and I'm just gonna tighten together here so it doesn't have a a little easier to grab. Before we go any further, I was this one here is a little loose. I'm just going to tighten it up just a bit. Just loosen this off here. Grab with a pair of pliers. Okay, it's sticking a bit right here. I do have lube in it, but... Yeah, let's check that. Okay, that's good. We'll tighten it up there. Okay. I'll we'll do the other side. Of course, get a bit of lube on that so it doesn't 
rust up. Sir is done. I put another ounce of oil in, so I got a, roughly about 22 ounces. Choke on, keys in, fuel's on, prime it a bit. Okay, so let's check the temperature. Temperature showing 13 degrees Celsius, 55.5 Fahrenheit. So I'll put it outside and let it get below freezing. If not, if I try to blow right now, everything tends to stick to it and then you end up ice everywhere. So I tried it out, you've seen it on the uh, video. It works really good, it throws snow fairly far, but there's a couple of issues I have to look after. Uh, one, I'm not happy with the carburetor, so I'm going to take the carburetor apart clean. And number two, I find on first gear, it's too fast. If you get a lot of deep snow and you want to go slow, you'd have to keep letting go of the uh, lever here, just to, to stop it from moving forward. And a lot of people, when they use it, they're not familiar. They just hold it down and they bog it right through the snow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the speed. So one is slow and you move up. Six is, I tried on six. It's really, really fast because it's not adjusted right. So I'm going to adjust it. So the carburetor and the shifter uh, speed adjustment is going to be on a separate video. So I'm going to close this video out. I'm going to say, if you like the video, appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks for watching my channel. Bye for now.